10, 10, 20s on your titties, bitch. 100 deep, VIP, no guest list. Oh, yeah. Welcome back. Um, This is going to be a good one. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we've tried. We've got LED side lights. We've got daylight, daytime running lights, which, well, they're not really daytime running lights. They're just side lights within the case built in. Anyway, I'm going to try some LED spotlights. Mm. Now, these are 12 volt. I'm not even sure if they're automotive. I uh, got given these, but they seem actually pretty good. 18 watt, so 18 watt LEDs, probably quite bright. And like I said, they're 12 volt and they've got the seal, the seal of approval there. I don't know if you've seen that. Seal of quality. So, this is what we're gonna put on. What I'm gonna put on. And, uh, well, see how good they are, really. Do you look at that? Stainless steel bolts with them and everything. Pretty heavy. Feel pretty good, actually. But first, it's breakfast time. And what is part of a very balanced, healthy breakfast? Eggs. So, let's get an egg for my breakfast. Right, so first, we might as well mount them. And these are the brackets which hold it on. As you can see, there's bolt holes in that. So that bolts onto there, and you can adjust the angle of it, like so. So, I'm thinking somewhere around here. I want on each side, sort of, near the middle. So, let's see what's behind there and see if it'll go there, all right? And if it does, we'll do something that I don't think I've ever done on this channel before. And I'm actually going to use one of these things with numbers on it. Uh, we'll try and get them somewhere near the middle ish anyway let's make sure there's nothing behind there on bumper so I can just about get my fingers behind to put a nut on and other side nah I can't get behind that because there's a radiator in the way and I don't want to take the bumper off because I can't be bothered oh no I can just about get to it so yeah I think they'll do so I'm going to try being the optimal word to get a rough centre where the bumper is. I need to be on my table to drive it further. So. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, I'm going to measure it from that point to that point and then look at where the middle is and put a mark. And it turns out that that was a complete waste of time because that little web is the centre already. So let's do mark it from there. So this is where this is where it gets technical because I'm not going to take any actual measurements of this now. I'm just going to do them by racket jabs eye, and I'm thinking I'm going to put them both in the centre like that. So it's like a light bar but made up of two sections. You see. Now, as long as I put this, so it's not fucking Renault Megan giving it big licks. Um, as long as I put this so that it is past that web, then I'll have room for both of them. So I'm going to put one there, mark it up, and then I'm just going to put the other one in the same place, the same distance. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have two lights in the centre. So I need to mark the centre of that hole. So that's where it wants to be roughly. This isn't exactly how I'm going to do it, but this is an example. I'll just mark that hole there, you see. Brilliant. So just for an idea of what we're going for, that's how they're gonna sit roughly. And they've been carefully marked out. So I need to drill that. And then when I've drilled that, I shall mount, some other shit has just turned up. I shall mount these brackets nice and lovingly on there. Right, so advisable before we actually stick them on car, make sure they work, which they do. Yes. So now we have in fact checked that our lights work. We need to drill our bumper nice and carefully to fit the brackets. For which we've got various screws to mount it. 
but none of the bolts were actually suitable because I'll tell you why. This, you see, there is no bolts with 30 mm head and the bracket, you didn't turn the bolt in the bracket. Look, it's got little locking pieces and I've got to turn it from the top. So none of them were suitable. So I've just pilfered more from work. So, as you see, I'm going to put washers and stuff on, but you see how it's going to go. It's going to go like that. And then I've got to get my fingers down here. Doesn't help that I've got fat hands. And I can get to the back of the bolt to put a nut on. And then I'll use my buzz gun, which makes it easier to tighten it up. So I'm just going to do that. And then when I've mounted them, then I'll come back. Now, if you decide to mount them on the bumper rather stupidly, I would advise taking the bumper off because, well, I've got to get my fingers behind there and I keep on dropping bolts down here. It's pretty awkward, to be honest with you. But I'm going to carry on struggling because, well, it's character building, you know? And a few trapped fingers later, we have them mounted there. And now I have to put some little bolts in the side of there. Also self-explanatory. So we've got our lights mounted in, well, a secure and aerodynamic position. Next, we're going to go on to the wiring. So first, I am going to join these two wires together. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to join these wires together. And then so I've got one wire. It's not going to join together, is it? Because it's not long enough. Well, I'm not going to do that now, am I? Right. There we go. Look at that. Now let's wire it up. Right, so as you can see now, we have linked both lights together so that, well, so they come on together. Um, and this is wiring for a house. But it works. Uh, I'm using the brown as a positive, blue as the negative, not live or neutral. Uh, it's DC, that's for AC. So I'm going to wrap that up. I'm going to feed the wire into the engine bay and cable tie it up just to wherever it'll fit and I'm going to get it somewhere near the battery and then we can wire in a switch and a relay do it all professional sort of now so I'm wrapping this with a bit of insulation tape and it's never going to look neat because it's got connectors inside it two wires going into one thin bits fat bits and what have you but a trick when you're using insulation tape is is as you're wrapping it keep it under a bit of tension and it'll sort of like, well, it'll just work a lot better. Like so. So now, feed this into the engine bit. Right, so now we've got the wire neatly tucked away, as you can see. And we've got another point. This leads us to why well, I've put a spare connector on there. And that's because I'm going to put a relay there. And it's going to be driven by a relay, which I need to go and get. And this is the relay so 87 and 30 that's our switch so 87 and 30 go to this wire which goes to the light and to the battery through a fuse holder so i'll stick them on and i'll show you it goes right so we're halfway there now we've got our positive feed which is going to through a fuse holder which the fuse isn't in so it can't shot out yet through the relay to the lights this wire goes straight to the lights and then we've got a negative which is on a permanent earth so now i need to make i'm going to mount that actually but when i've mounted that i'm going to mount it upside down i think so i might get full of water but when i've mounted that i am going to make our our switch our coil feed which is going to have to come from the side lights because i don't want these to work when the side lights aren't on um so I need to find a feed off the side lights to the back of the switch. Well, it depends which way I do it. I could earth the switch, I could earth it at this end, but I'm gonna mount this first. So this is gonna be our mount for the relay. Now, I would recommend before drilling holes and putting screws in to have a look what's on the other side, which I haven't done. So let's just hope for the best. <laughs> Seems to be hitting anything. Right, so that's our mount for our relay, which goes on there. Like I said, we've roughly got the wiring in for the switch side of the relay. Now I need to put a feed in, which I need to put a button in. 
So for that, I need to go inside the car, which leads us to once again, taking this face here off. So we just put that one screw and then pull it out like ish, sort of. Right, now, remember the wire for the illumination on the radio? I just might use that again. But first, I'm gonna decide where I'm gonna put the switch. And I am thinking, so I can see it from the driving position, I'm thinking there, so I need to drill a hole. So there it shall do. to ream that out. Nice and accurately. Nearly there. Now, I've already metered the switch out and I know that it's empty with silver pins that I need to use. So, let's throw it in now. Like a glove. So, We've now got our switch in place, and I'm hoping that lights up when it's turned on, but we'll, we'll soon find out if it actually turns on. But remember how I said about the wiring? Now, I need a feed from, from a light, well, from when the lights are on, so illuminated radio should do the job. So I've made a little wire connector to put into there, and then I will connect that end well one of them to the back of that switch there so the oh shit hold on yes right drop my phone so them two pins at the top when i metered it out them two are the ones that make when the switch is plugged in so i will put a wire a spare connector onto the then a wire coming out and then this is the fun bit i've got to take a wire to the engine bay then to the back of the relay so the idea is, is that I can only, this switch will only have power going to it when the lights are turned on. So I can't turn these LED lamps on without the lights being on. So let's put our connector in. I'll try and do this with one hand, but it's probably not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work, is it? That's a pretty tight connection, hold on. Right, try again. So. As you can see, this isn't going to work either. Fucking hell. Get in your shitter. Ah, oh, fuck this. And as if by magic, it is now connected. And this, like I said, I haven't metered this, but I'm hoping that's 12 volts when the lights are on. Would make sense. So now I need to make a wire going from here to the back of our switch. Like so. So, we'll connect this into here. Now, before I go any further, I'll just explain something. When you're using these bullet connectors, a rule that I tend to usually, nearly always, sometimes follow, is this is your positive side. So, I'm using the female, which is insulated. So, if this wire comes out, it's not got focus, focus. Whatever. Anyway, so if the, if the wire came out, it's not got the male one on there, which can touch against probably nothing because it's all plastic anyway, but it's just good practice. So when you're using, you know, any bullet connector, spade connectors, anything like that, the insulated one on the side, which is powered, basically, if it comes undone. So I'll plug these in now and I'll show you how this looks. So that's plugged in. Follow it up, red wire. And it comes through, and this is our switch. So like I say, I metered this, and it is the two, that one and that one, they make when you press the button. And the button sticks in, it's not one that you've got to hold down, because that would be pretty sick if you want to put lights on, you've got to press hold of it. But now, like I said, this is the fun bit, because now I've got a root wire into the engine bay. So, now as I said, now it's the fun bit. We've got to get 
this wire from here into the engine bay. And I haven't seen anywhere obvious yet. But I will see what happens if I feed it through where the bonnet release goes. Right, won't focus. Anyway, I'm gonna try and push the wire through there and hope for the best. Not expecting much, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And even if it doesn't work, I'm gonna leave it in the video. So I haven't got any welding rod, which is what I'd usually use in this situation as a fish. So I'm probably pissing into the wind. Feels like I'm pissing into the wind. Now, as suspected, I was in fact pissing into the wind. So I'm gonna try and put it down the side of these heater pipes. Also, oh no, what like daylight and get it through there. That'll do. Now, anyone else who's doing this, you might want to be more vigilant as to where you're putting the wire. But ah, that'll do for me. Oh, it's falling out. Right, let's try it again. See if it's through on the other side. Yes. So now, now there are probably better places to route this, but I have got to get it up to this relay. Now, so I'm just going to cable tie it to random things along its way. And then when I've done that, I'll wire it in. So now, as you can see, it's rooted perfectly and we've gone for a nice OEM look and it comes out here. So now I need to put a spur connector on it and connect it into our relay. Like so. So now on our relay, we have the two coil 86 and 85. Let's look for 85 for that one. So this goes into 85. I mean, it's a relay, it's a, just a coil, so it should work anyway, really, but. Push that on there. I'll push it on properly in a minute. And then this is gonna be our earth, which needs pushing on to the other one. Something like that. So, now we can put our relay back, and this is gonna go to here. Now, I'm gonna get rid of that one, and I'm going to put these two wires together into one connector because, well, because the connectors are too big for the wire and it'll just fucking fit better, obviously. Which will then look something like that. Now, some people don't like, or seem not to like, these crimp connectors. Let's zoom it in. Which I've been using for all of this, really. I mean, the spray connectors and what have you. But I quite like these, and I find that if you crimp the whole thing and you use proper ratchet and crimps, they actually make a really good joint. Anyway, let's stop talking shit and put that on there. So I need to put that bolt back in there, which is just like, yeah, yeah. Look at this struggle. I could just put the phone down, but I'm gonna carry on struggling like a fucking idiot. Makes good viewing, doesn't it? And that under here, apart from the fuse not being in, should be job done. So let's go back inside and wire it into the switch. And that involves feeding this wire up here. So, well. Yes. Lovely and neat. Connect it into the back of the switch. And that, when we put the fuse in and put it back together, should be all done. So, press the button. See if we can hear the relay click. Turn the lights on. Don't know if you can hear that from here. But, 
Oh, the light doesn't stay on on this. I thought it had a light inside it, but it'll have to do. So let's put it back in there, push it in. Turn that off. Now let's put our fuse in and see if it actually works or if it causes a massive fire. I'll just put a 10 amp fuse in just to guess. I mean, these I think are 18 watts each, so 10 amp will be more than enough. And if it shorts out, then it should blow it before, like I said, before the fire gets out of hand. Anyway, time to try it. So the light's on. And press. Yes. Look at that. It's just beautiful. And as you can tell, they're nice and solidly mounted as well. Actually, we're not finished because up on further fucking about, the other two contacts, if I connect them in, they give us, well, they give us a light. So I'm going to try and suss out a circuit. Probably not that difficult to suss out, but I'm not that good at electrics. Were, when I turn this on, it powers this as well. So let's try that. Right, so thinking about this now. Just a quick thinking about it. Now, I haven't got enough spare connectors left, so I'm just going to have to switch the wires on for now. Something like that. I don't know. But, to make the light come on, positive, negative. All right? Now, this is a positive coming in. Now, if I wired that to that, and then that to negative, it'd be on all the time. So, I need to wire it to the positive coming out, to the positive going in for the light, and then wire that to negative. So, I need to put a loop from there to there, and that out to negative, hopefully. So I'm gonna try it anyway, see what happens. So, unfortunately, I'm a spade connector short of a picnic, wherever the saying goes. Um, let's turn lights on, see if this works. I actually haven't tried this yet, so let's see if it works. Right, I'll just push that onto there, and yes! Perfect. Apart from I'm missing a fucking spade connector. So I need to connect that onto there. So I need another spade connector. And I'm going to put it all back together. And then, I'll go and see if it works at night. So, here we have the masterpiece. We have got an earth wired into the earth of the stereo. We've got a positive coming from the illumination from the stereo to trick the relay when the lights are on, as I've already mentioned. And, and I've had to wire this switch in such a way so that when it's turned on, it gives power to this bit, and hence the earth. Now, I thought, I've got to have a spare connector somewhere, and I didn't have one. So, for now, I've just taped it on, but I will put one on it. But we'll save that for, well, I'll just do that on a later date. So, as I said before, I was going to put it all back together. Well, now, I'm going to put it all back together. And then make sure that this doesn't come off, because... Right, turn the lights on. Look at that. Bright red light. Perfect. And, like I said, I'm going to put all this back together, which I've done probably three times on this channel already, so I'm not going to film that. And then we'll see how they are at night. And all back together. Just make sure it still works. Lights on. Lights on. And... And there we go. Um, this is all sort of tied up-ish. Uh, not going to pretend it's the neatest job in the world because it's just sort of thrown in. But it's, well, functional for now. Anyway, like I said, mentioned about three times. I'm going to wait for it to go dark to see how bright they are. So, I'll be back then. So now, it's finally night time. And we are in the same dodgy dark car park as where I tested the bulbs and the, well, the LED bulbs and the 100 watt bulbs. Anyway, so let's compare this. So when we turn it on, if we can find the button, yeah, look at that. And comparison, off, on. Um, it's not really picking up that well, but they do shine quite far. Um, can see a lot more with them on than with them off, but 
they are sort of like a, well they just light up everywhere there's no beam off or anything but like a country road or something these could be pretty good and compare them to main beam as well main beam on so now obviously when you're bombing down country roads at you know 110 you can see a bit better look at that Turn them off. Normal beam. There we go. So they're actually quite good. Um, like I said, they don't shine that. I won't say they won't shine far. They don't shine that concentrated, but they are pretty bright. Let's have a look at the shooters from outside as well. So yes, um, definitely a bit on the dazzling side. So probably shouldn't use them when you're on a road but you can see turn the headlights off that's off just the well just the spotlights it's proper sick and that anyway that is all for this one so see you next time don't forget to like comment subscribe check out instagram as i've said before it's just stupid blog, stupid videos with underscores in it and uh yeah like i said check out my other videos as well peace out